Hey everyone, this video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more like a podcast uh, style of video where I basically rant about uh, The Last of Us. So, what did I thought of the first season of The Last of Us? Uh, well, I, I have already done uh, a video about this where I expressed some uh, positive comments, uh, mainly from the first episode. Now, let's talk about the rest. Of the season. In general, I have to say I enjoyed it. Uh, not a lot, I wasn't crazy about it, mainly because The Last of Us has a very formulaic story structure. It's not really a, a zombie uh, story, it's a family story. It's a story about a father and uh, a daughter, uh, which of course are not related to each other. There are some really raw emotional moments I expected the show to be much more action-oriented and that wasn't the case because the show mainly was interested in the relationship between Joel and Ellie. Now, there is a, a very positive thing about this because if you have uh, excellent writing and excellent actors, you can uh, give them time to... Uh, further their characters by intimate scenes. And that's what we got mostly in the first season. We had an absolute uh, broken shell of a man, uh, Joel, and we had a uh, enthusiastic but timid emotionally Ellie. You know, under all that curse words, under all that brassness, was just, uh, you know, a teenage little girl that was scared of this new world that is uh, filled with monsters. What is her future going to be like? We see throughout the season Ellie uh, becoming more mature. She learns to trust Joel. She learns to accept him as a father figure. And uh, about the same is true for Joel. He's afraid to love again. He's afraid to be intimate in a father-daughter sense at least. Throughout the season, through all the dangers that uh, we see these two pass through, we see these two characters develop and learn to trust each other. There are a lot of positive elements in The Last of Us, mainly because we had a lot of opportunities to witness the danger that is outside the camps, or Fedra camps, and what happens when Ellie and Joel meet with this uh, danger, whatever it uh, personified by it, by cannibals, by zombies, whoever they might be. The real problem for me is that The Last of Us isn't really fun to watch. I know it might sound a bit weird because I'm saying all these positive things about it, about the characters, about how well developed uh, they are and uh, whatever action scenes. They were done really well, but it was not a show that I was looking for to watch because I knew that nothing will happen to Joel or Ellie. We have stories with characters that are surrounded by danger, but you know yourself that they are safe. Nothing will happen to them because there are no other characters. These are the two main characters. The Last of Us, its main thing is about the relationship between a father and a daughter. It's not about the zombies. It's not about the clickers. It's not about the virus. It's not about the cannibals or whatever other danger they might encounter. These dangers, they could have been symbolic. Uh, the Last of Us could have been a story about a knight and a peasant girl that has something, some, some kind of valuable, doesn't matter what. And it could have been set up, you know, a thousand years ago or two thousand years ago, whatever. It still would have been about a father-daughter relationship. Now, that makes it problematic because you know what you are going to expect. You are going to expect to see a family story first and not a story that focuses on action or suspense or tension. Uh, for example, in Game of Thrones, you were worried after the first season, you know, spoilers if you haven't seen it, I don't know how that's possible, but spoilers if you haven't seen uh, Game of Thrones, but after the first season, you were worried about the fate of these characters exactly because other characters that were extremely important died. 
the, that show killed them. And from that moment, a cultural wave started within the, all the TV shows that were released from that point on. And you kind of expect shows that uh, they might kill a character just to show to the audience what will happen, you know, to show them that these characters are not safe, that, that uh, is the kind of show that you're watching. But The Last of Us is not interested in any of that. Now, that doesn't make it boring or less valuable as a story. It just makes it a bit predictable. And predictable stories in a dramatic sense, if it's only drama, then uh, it could become formulaic, which is what happens to the first season of The Last of Us. Now, I haven't played the game. I don't know. I haven't, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in the rest of the story. I don't really care because I'm only interested in what I'm watching at that moment. That is basically the problem for me with The Last of Us, that it was never fun to watch. The first episode does an excellent job of showing you that this is a, a senseless world, that people that you love may die, that even a sweet teenage girl can die. One that we think it's a, a main character. Now, as I've said before, it's a bit of a bluff because Joel's daughter dies and uh, his uh, girlfriend dies, but no one else has any chance of dying, any kind of important character, because there is none. That's it. These two important characters, Joel's daughter and his girlfriend, were the only ones that died and had an emotional resonance with the audience because there was no one else. And that is the biggest fault of the show. In my opinion, it should have invested into a couple of episodes, at least, in introducing two or three other main characters so we could have a diversity of storyline possibilities, if you like. So we might wonder, will they die also? Is uh, Joel safe? Is Ellie safe? I mean, the people that uh, don't know the rest of the story, that haven't played uh, the game. After the teaser of the first episode, where we went to Indonesia for the first five minutes or so, and we saw how the um, virus got its start, it was the only moment that I was excited because when you have a show where you don't know what exactly are you going to see in the next episode, but you know there's going to be some quality there in writing and directing and production value, that makes it exciting. So I kind of expected, I guess, The Last of Us to jump in an episode here and there and show us how the virus wrecked cities and relationships and families and devastated the whole communities, you know in other countries or in other places. But that never happened and it was a bit disappointing, uh, to be honest, because that particular segment in Indonesia was excellently done. And the thing is, after Joel's girlfriend dies and where basically the show becomes a road trip of violence, if you like, then it became a bit formulaic when they uh, turned the fourth episode and they went inside the town or you go, okay, now we're watching a side quest. But you kind of knew what to expect, you know, they would get themselves into trouble, they have some kind of difficulties, violence will happen, probably a zombie, and then they will escape. So that's why I have said it would be more exciting if you had another storyline with a couple more characters. I understand that the creators of the show, that's not what they were going for, and that's fine, you know. I'm just uh, throwing my opinion here, and that's that. But I think a storyline with two or three more main characters would have made the show much more interesting to watch. Now, let's talk about the final episode. I really liked it, although I kind of expected a little bit more, something more nuanced and complex as a storyline structure. A lot of talk has been made if Joel made uh, the right decision in rescuing Ellie from the doctor. I have uh, read comments and articles saying that uh, that doctor never had any chance, that the uh, vaccine was never going to be a thing, that the Fireflies would have never had the resources to make and produce a vaccine. And I think that is the case. Although my comment would not exactly be on the episode, we got a very individualistic kind of uh, storytelling decision. Joel deciding to not sacrifice Ellie for the future of humanity. Because, let's face it, he would have no idea if uh, the Fireflies can actually produce 
the vaccine. Most likely they would not. Uh, they have no electricity, they don't have any numbers. The fact that uh, 20 years after the civilization has fallen, that any kind of uh, technical knowledge uh, has survived in such a number and in, in such a technocratic way that they can produce uh, the rebels a vaccine is almost ridiculous to say the least. But how would Joel know all of that? It's not his job, you know, it's, he's just an ex-marine that uh, works construction. Uh, he's motivated not by reason, but by his love for his, let's say, adopted daughter. I think Joel made the right decision. I'm not particularly crazy about how the show decided to film it. Him all going Rambo, or for the younger audience, John Wick, and uh, start killing, and uh, he basically killed off uh, the entire Firefly division that uh, was in the hospital. That was a bit weird. But again, we come to the idea that all of that happened because we need to see a rift between the father and daughter relationship that I would expect will play a big part in the second season. So, as final comments go, yeah, The Last of Us in the first season was mostly positive. Not great. It was good. I just hope in the next season they feel comfortable enough to open the story just a little bit. So we're not watching just a father and daughter relationship, but uh, make the story a little more nuanced and complex. I don't know if they're going to do that. Probably not, because The Last of Us, as it stands, is a father-daughter story. And if they don't change it, you know, that's fine. It all depends really on how good the writing is and uh, how good the production values are. The production values have an extremely high budget of, you know, like $10 million an episode, something crazy like that. Which, uh, if you don't know, $10 million per episode was the budget of Game of Thrones. And we only got basically one big action scene in the entire first season uh, with the zombies and the clickers and all that. Anyway, that's it for me. See you in the next video.